Okay, so the Pivot Interactives lab with the ping pong ball cannon. Uh, we will do a quick review of data collection uh, methods with that uh, portion of the lab. So the Pivot Interactive stuff, they have a little tool icon that shows up in the upper right corner uh, of the video. The tools that are available vary from one lab to the next. So it won't always be the same tools uh, each and every lab. So we'll go through today and kind of check those things out. Uh, sometimes when we do a lab, the lab instructions will tell us exactly what to do. This is the best way to set things up. This is exactly how you should measure things. And it's just up to us to go through and make sure we read the directions and try to do our best to follow their instructions and see what we can do. Uh, sometimes uh, we have to think about that setup. We have to think about what's what we need to measure uh, and we need to decide how to use those tools to do so. Um, we'll try to make it very clear this year which of these two methods we're using for those labs. Uh, we'll try to make it very clear uh, that the instructions are telling you what to do or we'll try to make it clear that it's up to you to determine uh, how you're going to use those tools to make measurements. Uh, in this ping pong ball cannon lab, uh, Pivot Interactives, the lab instructions do tell us how to use those tools. So we'll see what we can get here. Uh, so here is the Pivot Interactives uh, ping pong ball cannon. So up here we have a variety of things we can do. There's this toolbar here that shows, brings out and shows the different uh, things that we can use. A uh, little stopwatch icon for a stopwatch. A uh, little meter stick icon for a tape measure, a ruler, meter stick. Uh, and then this little red dot, uh, we can click on these to kind of mark where we believe the object to be if we feel we need to do that. So uh, in this lab, it does tell us uh, exactly how to uh, measure things, how to, uh, where to put everything up here, control the video. It tells us what to do there. Um, and they say to measure the, use the ruler to measure the distance from the right edge of the ball uh, to the left edge of the pop can. That's one of the questions they ask us there. But then later on, once we get down to the data collection stuff, it tells us exactly what to do for those things. And in here, uh, it tells us that we really should probably put that ruler on the very left end of where we first see that ping pong ball. So if I try to get that ping pong ball visible, I hit play, there it is. Uh, I'm gonna go back a frame, there we go. I think that's the first frame it's visible. I go back one more, it's in the cannon. So uh, there, it's visible. Now I can move this tape measure or this ruler so that the green line on the ruler is just touching the front edge, the leading edge of that ping pong ball. So now I've got the uh, meter stick right on the front edge of that ball. And here it says we're on frame 43 and the time that has elapsed is 0 0.01654 seconds. But if this is the first image that we're interested in using, then we can hit this. This is the first image that we care about. We hit this, that resets the clock to zero. It says for the measurements that we're using, time is starting now. We don't care about what happened five seconds ago, five minutes ago, five years ago. This is the beginning of the stuff that we're studying. So uh, we go through, we do that. And then our first data point, zero centimeters, zero seconds. We can go down here. We should say time is measured in seconds. If we put it in an equation, the variable we would use would be time. And we could say position measured in centimeters. And we often use the letter X. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, well, I'll stick with X for now. Um, and then we just said the time was zero. And we lined it up so that our centimeter, our ruler was uh, at that spot. And if I wanted to, uh, to make sure I kind of keep track of where things are, I could go and do this and say, hey, there's my first frame. The middle of that red circle is at the position that I'm trying to measure the location of the ball. 
Now, if I do frame advance, I go forward one frame, I have this new position, this new time, 0 0.00038 seconds, and we're at about 7.8. So I can say 0 0.00038 seconds. And if up here I'm at 5, 6, 7, if it was right here, that would be 7. If it was exactly here, it would be 8. For me, it's a little bit in between the two. It's closer to 8 centimeters than it is to 7. So I'm going to go 7.8. And if I'm going to keep using those red dots, I could say, hey, the leading edge is right there. Uh, sometimes those little red dots are useful. Sometimes they, you might wonder why we're using them. It's sometimes it's useful in case uh, at some point you forget where the position was, or if you want to double check what your measurements are, you can go back and see where that red dot is, and that can help you uh, make sure you have that in the right position and that your number matches up correctly. So for this lab, we just keep on doing this, oops, and moving this object along frame advance again that's 10 15 almost 16 so that's like 15.5 or so centimeters and the time reading is 0 0.0007 two sevens point zero 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 seven seven and so that's how we go through and we use these tools um, these red dots are not required on this one. I don't remember. I don't think they even tell us that we have to use them. Uh, I'm just showing you how they can sometimes be helpful. And if we keep on going along, there are all these uh, extra time spots that we can make measurements of. We can measure the position of that object at every one of those positions, position and time of that object. Uh, and again, these ping pong ball cannons are <laughs> super cool, right? I mean, I, I hope you saw that little demonstration thing we did the other day to kind of get a feeling for things, uh, but right on through that bugger, just like ours did at home, right? Um, all right, so that's it for the data collection uh, and use of those tools uh, introduction on uh, Pivot Interactives. And I think we're kind of set from there.